You want me to, the truth? I really do, yeah. I think Fred Dannon is yeah. a plagiarist yeah. and full of shit. How's that? Because he's not going to like this, and he can sue me if he wants. If he, if this, that's not going to, well, I don't really care. But one, it was very narrow. It had to do with Dick Asher getting up and mumbling something about payola, that we decided we're not going to pay off the independent uh, promoters. No one has ever nailed an independent promoter for payola, by the way, mm -hmm. okay, that I know. The last payola conviction was like 1958, was Alan Freed. You skip 50 years, and you come to Donny Einer, who says, I, <coughs> excuse me, writes memos, pay people off. Going to write memos, right? Don't pay people off. Mm -hmm. But um, Dannon like focused on one particular, you know, narrow thing. I don't even think payola exists <coughs> the way people, you know, assume it does. I don't really know. No one was ever going to show it to me if it did exist. But he focused on one thing because Dick Asher got all upset and said, "No, no, I wanted to cut off the managers." That's actually not what happened. We all sort of got scared because uh, Clyde Davis said he's not going along with this industry boycott and all of a sudden he was having all the hits. Of course, the indies were the gatekeepers, not necessarily the payoff people, but they were the gatekeepers, hired by radio stations. So we all sort of loosened it up. We'll get the managers money. It was all, I don't know what it was really. Uh, so the book is very narrow, well, you know, on its focus. It's not only one side, it's very narrow. It's taking one, you know, sort of slice from really Dick Asher getting all excited and whatever. Uh, also, when I wrote the, together with a guy named Ritz, David Ritz, who's very prolific, David wrote the lyrics to Sexual Healings, the co-writer of my book. Uh, he wrote the Brother Ray story, the Ray Charles thing that was made into a movie. He's written this thing. Uh, he wrote um, um, the uh, <coughs> Marvin Gaye story. He's written a lot of stuff, uh, and he's very prolific, and he's very good. We did some research because I wanted to put stuff about Goddard Lieberson, who was before me. He was a very unique character. That's uh, Clive's predecessor. Mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> and um, we did some research and we found a record, it wasn't written down, by Charles Corralt. Remember the newscaster? It was in a eulogy for Goddard Lieberson. And when he, he was a very unusual guy, Goddard. And Corralt was saying it was true. One day you would find him in a Paris brothel, and the next day you would find him conducting an economic summit meeting. He was sort of very uh, uh, ubiquitous in that sense. So it was the whole eulogy by, uh, uh, by Charles Corralt. And if you look in Hitman, you will see that eulogy word for word from beginning to end with no attribution and no thing that he stole it from somewhere else. I think that's called plagiarism. So if, and he also wrote that I am dripping with gold jewelry. You see any? A couple of rings, but nothing serious. And he also wrote that I um, always lived in one-story houses. I always lived in two-story houses at the time he wrote the book. Well, if you can't get that right, then what makes you think you're going to get anything else?